Okay, so since I um, reviewed uh, the original Savage Garden a few days ago, I might as well go on to um, Savage Garden's second and final album, Affirmation. Now, um, I have a lot of history with this um, this album. It's been one of my most listened to albums ever. It's, it was probably the very first full album I ever actually listened to. And as I said, um, Savage Garden was um, one of the one of the first bands that I ever actually um, remembered listening to and actually hearing their songs. Now, um, I said that um, that Savage Garden, the original album, was a great debut album, and this is basically the next. Um, it's it's basically it's it's even better than the first one. It's kind of the most logical and and best progression you can have from a first album to a second album and right now um, as currently now it still is probably my favorite Australian album of all time and I have listened to quite a few it's just it's it's such um, a great mix of certain different things it has a bit of rock in it but it's a bit um it's a lot has more it's a bit, has more atmosphere in it and a lot um, more like really delicately um, written um, lyrics and overall just um, the sound of Darren's voice just carries this album so much. You, um, he also um, improves um, his, um, his voice work um, from the original album and you really in this album really hear for the first time just how high his voice can go musically. So the original Savage Garden album was a smash hit um, like only like a, a few months after its um, release it became one of the most um, best-selling Australian albums of all time and went international um, almost immediately um, Savage Garden became um, instant um, household names around the world almost everybody knew their songs from the first album within like a year and of course in this second album they had a lot to live up to and in my opinion, I think they exceeded everyone's expectations to make an even better album than the first. Basically, almost every song in this album is a hit after hit, and they all stand on their own. I don't really think there even is a weak track in this entire album. I love every single song on this album equally um, to each other, and they all um, have so many um, great things about them, and they all have um, their own their own themes, their own um, their own atmosphere. It's just all around very great and memorable album with a lot of great lyrics and a lot of great mus musical talent and skill involved in the production of this um, album. So the um, the album starts out with their first track, which is um, what the uh, entire album is named after. Affirmation. So this is basically a song about um, Darren's beliefs and what he believes in, and um, every single line in this song starts with the word "I believe," and it's a very catchy song. Um, I'm not sure if it was maybe the best choice to make this the first song on the album. Maybe put it towards the end, but um, I really have no real complaints with this song either way. It's such. It is a very memorable song. And it um it reveals a lot about um Darren um, himself and like his experiences and kind of like almost like his kind of little commentary on the world. Then we go into um Hold Me, which is a um another love song, which is all about um you know just the um the comfort of being held in someone's arms and looking for um, the right person to love, I guess. It's also a fantastic sounding song. The, um, something, um, I mean, the, the synth work in all of these tracks was really, um, like they really hit it out of the park for the time it came out in, I'm pretty sure in, in the late 90s, uh, making electronic synth sounds was not easy. And um, since like, um, the electronic um, scape of um, music back then was um, only just starting to really um, get get really big. I mean, like Dark Punk only um, released their album a few years 
same um, same year as the original um, Savage Garden album, and th there were he th there were many um, smaller artists at the time experimenting with um, with, with all different types of electronic equipment and. Savage Garden really um, knew just how to balance the um, just the right balance between synth and rock and pop. Probably most of the um, the synth work and all the instrumentation work was probably all done by Daniel Jones. He really doesn't get enough credit than what he deserves. He really, really blew it out of the park with this album with his musical skill. It is um, a shame that he didn't want to keep on going, but I guess he just didn't want a life of fame, I guess, but um, kind of a bit of a shame that we never saw any more um, public releases um, of his musical work because I personally love him. I think uh, um, I think he um, he has great skill and talent that he really poured into this album, and um, I just have to say um, he he did a really good job. Then we have um, the Lo um, I knew I loved you, which is another love song um, from written by Darren and Daniel and really shows the um, the raw beauty of just um, how many um, notes that um, Darren's voice can just like effortlessly hit and glide into and it's um, it's a beautiful sounding track you feel like reinvigorated after you after you listen to it and it's overall just um, another classic hit that has um, stayed in the mind of um, Australian, um, Australian consciousness for a really long time after it came out. Then we have um, we have the um, the animal song, which is another upbeat, catchy song, kind of just like um, one of Darren's fantasies of just trying to escape daily life and how he wants to live like an animal because he feels that animals are truly free, and that's basically the theme of the song. It has a really good opening hook with like a, um, lots of drums, some some elements of rock in here too. Overall, a really good track. We get um. Probably the um, most powerful track on the album, definitely one of the most memorable to me, and one of the most powerful tracks I've I've ever heard. Um, Crash and Burn, and it's basically just um Darren reaching out to the audience and anybody who's listening, just to give the um the simple but um very powerful message that um no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what you're suffering from, you're you're not alone, and just the message of this entire. Um, song is just to reach out no matter what because there's always somebody on, on the other side who can who can help you and I'm pretty sure this um this song is probably used for a lot of um a lot of, a lot of the whole music for, for a lot of mental health and crisis um, lines I'm pretty sure um they've that th this song has been there because it's basically just um a song of um of like um you know, just um, of unconditional support, basically, and you always feel a little bit better every time you hear the song. Uh, then we have the um, the song "Chain to You," which is definitely um, the most um, rock, hip, um, the most rock um, orientated um, song of the entire album. Basically, just um, revo um, revolves around kind of like the sexual magic of like a relationship. It's um. Definitely a very um, sexual song. It's all about you know, kind of just like um, about lust and and desire and basically just being being glued to the person you love. Um, Darren is able to um, to um, um, to give some really good delivery here in his um, in his vocal work and um, it's a very punchy and memorable song and it's full of energy and it's overall um, an another great track. And then we get to um, The Lover After Me, which is um, definitely um, one of the most um, calming tracks on the album. It's basically um, takes place after um, a breakup, and Darren is kind of like reminiscing of like where her lover is now and how different their lives have become when they split up and whether they remember each other. The, the way they used to, and it's overall just um, a very um, emotional and um, reflective song. It has a lot of um, really good um, synth work, um, synth work for um, the late '90s, and overall um, also has um, a few elements of rock in it. It's overall um, 
another great song. Two beds um, and a coffee machine is definitely the most emotional and um, delicately, delicately uh, written track on the entire album. It uh, tells the story of um, a woman in, a in an uh, abusive uh, relationship basically having to leave the house with her kids and basically to not look back and try and start a new life. It's um, definitely um, a very um, a very different song compared to um, the rest of the album. It's a very um, it's very sad sounding but um, touching and um, very soulful song. Kind of a very brave um, song for Darren to write. Definitely um, at the uh, time that it was released but overall, a very memorable song that um, a lot of people um, don't don't know about. It, um, it's a great song, very underrated song. Definitely um, a highlight of um, the album. "Will Be Free" is probably the um, the climax of um, of the album. It's basically um, also Darren reassuring and telling listeners that um, no matter what you've been through. It's never too late to break free from your um, from your demons, and it's also um, I think it's a uh, it's it's like a vocal masterpiece from from Darren. This is basically the song that um, this song is basically why people remember Darren Hayes as the person who can sing higher than basically any other person. In Australia or even worldwide, he goes so high in this song, and it hits this um this amazing climax crescendo that is just um basically um just euphoric to listen to. It's um it's a, it's a slow building song, very calming, and it just hits this um amazing crescendo where all these drums kick in, and overall a very energized track, and um definitely leaves you feel very um invigorated. Um, after it ends, the uh, final and the, the twelfth and final song on the album is um, the closer. I don't know you anymore, which is um, another very calming and serenading um, song of Darren singing um, about a about a past lover that um, he hasn't seen in ages and and just um, not knowing who the person is anymore and it's there's um a lot of nice piano work on this um on this final track a lot of great voice work and um overall um another one of darren's really um really beautiful and calming tracks i gotta really um give credit to both um darren and daniel here for making such um, a memorable and incredible and unique sounding album and of course um, this um, album would have gone nowhere without um, Daniel, Dan Daniel Jones carefully working in, 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 in the background just to um, in just creating this um, unique um, 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 the very um, unique um, atmosphere and identity of, um, of this album um, I said um, this this album and the previous really were the sound of um, the sound of Brisbane for um, a really long time because it's some of the most popular music that's ever come out um, of this um, of this city and it is just such um, a, just makes you feel beautiful and um, and so and so alive and it's, it, it was a very fresh sounding album and really nothing else at the time really sounded like this and the production quality it is amazing. It really goes to show that um, just the passion of two two random guys who wanted to make something special is all is all it takes to create um, an album that was um, so um, popular and um, critically acclaimed as, as, as this one. There, um, there really, as I said before, there really isn't um, a weak track on this album. They all um, flow together really perfectly and I can't really seem to rate one higher than the other one. It is one of my favourite albums and it's definitely um, left an impact on me since childhood and I'm going to give it a perfect score, 10 out of 10. It's one of the best 
um, Australian albums out there, one of the best albums that I've ever heard. And it's just really something special and really something um, unique and um, a real gem of um, the late 90s uh, music scene. It really goes to show you that um, if you just love to make music, just put something out there and everybody will just, um, will just love it. It's just, I mean, to me, Savage Garden is um, kind of like, um, symbolizes just the, um, the pure love for making music and not really caring what anybody else really and truly thinks. It's just doing what, you, what makes you makes you feel happy and if you don't want to do it anymore and don't want to be consumed by the fame then you just quit. I mean, I don't really know how Savage Garden would progress after this album. Well, for one thing, we never got another album but I just think it just probably just wasn't meant to be and they're really, I don't think they really could have gone in any other direction apart from this. I mean, Darren Hayes, of course, still continued on his own, but of course, um, Dan Daniel Jones wasn't there with his um, with his skills to kind of back him up. But I feel that Darren learnt a lot from Daniel Jones, just pure love for for making good and genuine sounding music that he um, he decided decided to um, keep on going and doing it, doing it himself. Really is um story of just um how inspiration spreads I guess and um I mean I um I mean I was inspired, the whole world was inspired by two basically two two nobodies that just wanted to make that were inspired by music and become famous overnight. That to me is kind of the story of um Savage Garden and it's um it, it's great, it makes you feel makes you feel like it, that, that you can do anything.